So now that we have a basic understanding of the ideas and sort of the, the general ideas of chromatography, we're going to have a look at just two specific types of chromatography, paper and thin layer chromatography. Now, basically, these two, these two forms of chromatography are very similar. However, what varies is their stationary phase. So in both, in both forms, we have sort of a sheet of cardboard, or obviously for paper chromatography, a sheet of paper, like this. And basically, when we're talking about paper chromatography, this is the stationary phase, and this is paper. So that is the stationary phase in paper chromatography. So we'll abbreviate that with SP. Okay, in thin layer chromatography, this is probably this is going to be a piece of cardboard. But what's what what the pa the stationary phase when we're talking about thin layer chromatography is in fact going to be a thin fine powder. And so this thin fine powder covers sort of a piece of cardboard like this, covers it, gives it a nice, uh, a nice thorough clear coating. And sort of we, so we cover this with powder, and so that layer of fine powder is the stationary phase. So it's kind of covered in all this sort of powdery stuff. So it kind of forms a screen or a layer on top of this this piece of cardboard. So the piece of cardboard is really just there to carry this fine powder in thin layer chromatography. So this thin fine powder is the stationary phase. And often, often when we're dealing with thin layer chromatography, this thin fine powder will be something like alumina. So this is probably just one that we're often going to deal with is going to be a stationary phase of aluminium oxide like that. But that's not important. The fact is, if we have paper chromatography, we have a piece of paper here, and that's the stationary phase. If we have thin layer chromatography, we're going to have a piece of cardboard that's going to have this thin fine powder coating on one side. And that thin fine powder is the stationary phase in thin layer chromatography. Now, when we're doing this uh, paper or thin layer chromatography, the system, uh, the process is pretty much identical. What we do is we, the solution that we're testing, the solution that we want to obtain a chromatogram of, we get a little bit of that, we get a little bit of that solution, and we just put a dot here like this. We don't do it right at the bottom, but what probably the best way to do it is in fact to rule the line maybe you know a certain distance from the bottom of our piece of paper or cardboard and then if we want to do more than one chromatogram on the on the sheet then we then we do all of these then we dot you know all the different solutions that we want to do on this line and we call this line the origin so say we want to run two chromatograms on this uh, on this piece of piece of paper or maybe this uh, thin layer chroma chromatography sort of powdery powdery piece of cardboard if we want to run two, then we put we dot two of the solutions. We dot the two solutions that we're dealing with on this, and we call this line here. We call this the origin. This line is what we call the origin. And so then what we do is we want to dip this in water. Again, like it, as as it will be in a lot of cases, our stationary phase here is going to be water. So what we do is we we fill. We put. We put this. Uh, this piece of cardboard or paper into a beaker. However, we have to be very precise with how how we put this into the beaker. So we want the beaker to have some water in it because the water is the mobile phase, and the water is going to be what carries these solutions up the piece of paper or up the up the thin layer, in order to, for us to obtain the chromatogram. Now, when we're dipping this this piece of paper in, we sort of dip it in vertically into a beaker containing water, and we want to have the water, the mobile phase, fill to somewhere between the bottom of the paper and the origin. So somewhere like that. Somewhere sort of between this height and this height. Basically we need to have the water high enough so that it touches the bottom of the paper and therefore can run up the uh, the paper or the or the cardboard. But we don't want to have it too high because if we have if we have the water level above these spots of solution, then these spots of solution are just going to get dissolved in in the water, and we're going to obtain sort of a messy chromatogram if we obtain any chromatogram at all. So what we want is the is the the height of the water to be below the origin, below these spots of solution, but above the bottom of the piece of paper, and that way, as the water just naturally seeps up the paper, it will carry carry this solution with it rather than dissolving the solution. And so. So that's how high we fill it, and then what we do is we just we hold it there, we suspend it there at this height, and we just let the water do its thing. So we wait, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes, however long we need to wait, to obtain a chromatogram. So what's going to happen when we obtain the chromatogram is this water, this mobile phase, 
So this is the mobile phase here. This mobile phase is going to sort of seep up the paper. The paper is going to get wet sort of gradually from bottom to top. And so what we do, once the water, once this, we call we call the mobile phase the solvent. And so as the water seeps up, we, we consider where the solvent front is. So say we end up with a solvent front up here. That basically means that that is the point at which, that is the highest point at which the paper is still wet. That is the, that is the, that is the height that the water reached as we ran the chromatogram. If we wait 10 minutes, we come back, the paper is wet up to this height here, then that is called the solvent front. So what we do is we, is we let the chromatogram run until the solvent front, you know, gets pretty high. We don't want it to go sort of all the way, we don't want it to fill the whole piece of paper, but we want it to get fairly high, the solvent front to get fairly high. And as the solvent front slowly moves up, up this piece of paper, what's going to happen is these spots of solution are going to spread out into their colours. So what we're going to have, so this yellow, maybe this yellow consists only only one type of substance and goes up to here. Maybe that's how high the, uh, the yellow substance spreads. And then in the red may contain some yellow, which may go up to the same height, and then some green, which goes a little bit further and so now we see we've done these two these two are uh, we've run two chrom we've we've tested two solutions on the one chromatogram and we've seen that this red has broken down into two components as the solvent front has moved to the top and this yellow has just broken down hasn't broken down at all it's really just been carried up the cardboard by this distance here and so that is uh, that's how we run a chromatogram. We, we dot it up, we, we, we rule the line at this origin, we dot our solutions on there, then we suspend this, this piece of paper vertically in a beaker containing some water. We make sure the water height is below the origin but above the bottom of the paper. And then we let sort of the natural course of, natural course of things uh, eventuate. We let the water sort of trickle up uh, the piece of paper and carry these, carry these spots of solution with it and we form this chromatogram. Now a key idea that we're now, a key way that we analyze these uh, these chromatograms is this idea of standards. So when we when we run a standard, we know a standard is kind of an accurate piece of information, and we can kind of compare something to it. The same with volumetric analysis. The same here. So when we talk about the idea of a standard, basically, if we want to analyze something using a standard, we must have an idea of what we're looking for. So say I've got this, this spot of uh, solution, maybe maybe it's a bit of dissolved fruit juice or something, and I want to figure out if a certain substance is in this fruit juice, if this fruit juice contains a certain substance. Basically, if I, I can analyze that using the idea of standards. So basically, if we want to do that, say, say this red dot here is some orange juice. And say this yellow dot here is vitamin C. We've got a pure solution of vitamin C, and we've dotted that there as a yellow dot. Now, what's going to happen is we, if we if we put a, a red dot of our orange juice here and a yellow dot of pure vitamin C solution there, then what we're doing is we're running a standard. So we know that our vitamin C is likely to be in the orange juice. So we've said, all right, we're going to run some vitamin C on the same chromatogram as the fruit juice. And now as we've let the chromatogram form, we see that we get a yellow point about here and a green point about there in the fruit juice. Now with vitamin C, we get a yellow point about there. And seeing as these are the same color and the same height, that's that suggests to us that this dot here, this component of the fruit juice, is in fact caused by vitamin C, telling us that the fruit juice contains vitamin C. And so that's how we run standards. Basically, if we're analyzing a substance, here, in this case, the red dot, and we want to see if it contains a certain other substance, in this case, the vitamin C or the yellow dot. What we do is we is we test, is we put a dot of uh, the solution that we're testing on the origin, and we put a dot of sort of that component that we want to find out, the component that we're testing to see if it's in this uh, this substance over here. So in that case, the vitamin C. We put a, we put a, a, a dot of that, a, of the, a dot of pure solution of that on the origin, and then we see if we get a similar chromatogram or a similar spot on the chromatogram, on the chromatogram caused by the pure sample and by the other sample that we're testing. And if a, if a similar if a similar sort of spot or, or substance is uh, obtained on the chromatogram, that it, that indicates to us that it is likely that the sample we're testing contains the other substance that we have uh, that we have on the right hand side here. So that is how we test. That's how we analyze chromatograms using standards. Basically, we have to already know what we're looking for, and that way we can 
put what we're looking for on the same chromatogram as the substance that we're testing and find out if this substance contains what we're looking for. So the reason that we have, when we're using the idea of standards, we have to use this, this standard on the same chromatogram as the substance we're testing because the distance that, uh, that this component is, travels up the chromatogram is highly dependent on how high this solvent front is, on how, on how long we wait and how, how high we allow the solvent front to reach. So if we run it on a separate chromatogram, uh, conditions may be slightly different and the solvent front may not reach the same height. So it becomes harder for us to compare this yellow spot here with this yellow spot here. However, if we run the standard on the same chromatogram, it allows us to see a really direct and clear comparison between uh, the standard substance that we're, we're testing the presence of and the other sample that we are, that we are sort of uh, testing and dealing with here. And so that's why we run our standard on the same chromatogram. And basically, if we want to analyze something with standards, we have to know already what we're looking for. So that's sort of the basic outline of paper and thin layer chromatography and how we can use standards to help analyze substances with these processes.